Chinese traditional elements to modern Chinese piano work. First, let me introduce what is the traditional Chinese music. The traditional Chinese music originates from ancient and modern Chinese history. <coughs> Many of these traditions are based on the local and folklore customs, and they are um, also uh, stemmed on the emperors such as Tang or Song or other dynasties. They are also influenced by the different regions which have their own eco-cultural period. Therefore, the Chinese traditional music is a melting pot of different inspirations. And the traditional Chinese music contains a lot of important components. Yeah. Many of these which are based on the instrument used. Uh, there are a lot of inst uh, Chinese instruments in the Chinese traditional music. The Arhu and Guzheng are the most famous instruments. First, let me introduce the Arhu. Uh, this is a two-stringed uh, instrument, and the player should use the bow to play the beautiful sound. Now, I would like to introduce one of the most famous Arhu piece. It is called Horse Rancid. This, is, this piece is describe the people are celebrating the house dancing. And the other is famous instrument is Guzheng. And uh, is, it is a plaque, plaque instrument. And the player uses the finger to play the string and make the beautiful sound. And now I would like to introduce one of the most famous Guzheng piece. It is called the Singing the Beautiful Night on the Fishing Boat. This is a very, very old piece. It was written over 1,400 years ago, and uh, this is the Tang Dynasty. After we understand what is the traditional Chinese music and traditional Chinese instrument, I would like to tell us how the Western composers use the traditional Chinese elements. When we do the researching of the Western uh, music, we can find the earliest piece the Western composer used in Chinese elements is the French composer Couperin composed his piece La Chanoir in 1730. And uh, this is, uh, at first it is for the clever child. Let us listen to this piece. <laughs> the score we can find the composer used a lot of grass notes in this piece and it made this piece full of color. Through this piece you can feel some emotion some emotions in the Europe. At that time the composers try to realize the China, one of the country, is full of ministries color. And when times goes into the 20th century, 
increasing numbers of works contained with the Chinese traditional elements. The examples including Debussy and uh, Arensky's. And uh, when I do the recording, I conclude there are two aspects of Western composers use Chinese elements. The first is use the traditional Chinese smooth scale, and the second is the traditional music melody. First, let us introduce what is the traditional Chinese smooth scale. The pentonic scale is the Chinese traditional smooth scale, and it is made of the five notes C, D, E, G, A. These five notes, the character of this pentonic scale is the C to E is a major third, and the E to C is a minor six, and there are no minor second in the pentonic scale. Debussy used a lot of pentonic scale in his piece, and uh, although he was influenced by the Japanese music, but the Japanese canton pentonic scale is come from China, because in Tang Dynasties, a lot of Japanese students come to China to study the music, the technology, and the culture. And we can look at the first picture. This, this is the root. The Japanese students come to China to study, to the capital of China. And the second photo is the sheep they drive. And we can find from the score, at the beginning in his piece, it stops. He used the pentonic scale. to city, he also used the pentonic scale as the melody. This is the example the Western composers use the pentonic scale. And uh, the other aspect is use the traditional Chinese melody, and the Russian composer Arinsky used the Chinese folk songs Jesma in his Etudes of 25 number 3. Let me play some part of this. First, let me play the theme of this piece. Also use uh, this Chinese folk melody. This melody is also imitates the Jasmine folk song, but it changed to the G flight major. And these are the two aspects of the Western composers use the traditional Chinese elements. And next, I would like to introduce the piano experience in China, because the piano is a Western instrument. During the late Ming and the early Qing dynasties, a lot, a lot of European missionaries come to China, and some of them are borrowed the clever child, some instrument, and use this as the gift 
to the Chinese emperors. And uh, when time goes into the 19th century, because of the Opium War, the imperialism uh, followed the European culture and the European music to the China. And uh, that is includes the modern piano. And uh, the development is depend on the new cultural movement in the early years of the 20th century, because at that time, the communicate between Western and China is more frequently. So at that time, the students start to, to study the modern Western composition technical. And at that time, they explore how to blend the Chinese traditional elements to the work they created. And in this time, the piano, uh, Chinese piano work make some progress. And from the 1937 to 1948, because of the anti-Japanese anti war and uh, uh, the, some of the police, a lot of police are full of the rural, uh, tell, describe the rural life and the national spirit because the government believe this music can encourage the public have the can courage to fight with the Japanese soldier. And uh, the developmental growth is in the from the 1949 to 1966, because at that time uh, the Chinese has a new government, and uh, the government is strongly support the art case. And at that time, uh, uh, the government established a lot of conservatory of music. It is includes two very famous conservatory of music. One is the Central Conservatory of Music, and another is the. Wuhan Conservatory of the Music. But in the uh, year 1966 to 1976, because of the Cultural Revolution, the development of piano arts was slower because at that time, uh, the people believed the traditional and old things and are terrible. And they needed to build a new society for the chairman and uh, for his government. We can see the two pictures. The first picture is the people of Paris, the chairman, and uh, the second the picture is they want to destroy the old and traditional things. But when time go into the 1980s, because of the uh, reform and opening up policy used in China, the Chinese composers was not restricted to use the old and uh, old structure and sin because in the Cultural Revolution, the structure are always the much stale. And the same are always the Paris, the chairman, and the government. And now they started to enjoy more space and freedom to borrow from the Western influence. And from this time, Chinese piano comp composition enter a new time. And uh, in today, technology and application of new ideas has become an important characteristic of modern Chinese piano works. Many pieces are written for the piano. As a result, the Chinese piano music has become more colorful. Now, after I we understand the piano experience in China, I would like to introduce two works as an example of how Chinese elements are adopted in the composition for the piano. The first is Chung Wu. Between the 1970s and uh, the early 1980s, the Chinese pianist uh, Liu Shikun invited another pianist uh, and uh, composer, Mr. Sui Yichang, to come to Xinjiang province to collect the focal materials of the music. And when they come to the Xinjiang province, the grass are, fo are fully mushroomed, and the people are celebrating the harvest. Mr. Sui Yichang was inspi inspired by this thing. And when they come back, he writes this piece. Chu is a Uyghur style music and follows the Western Romantic composition technique. It successfully combines the national and the Western elements. Due to its equal composition technique and the special musical style, it is a very important piece of the Chinese music repertoire. Now let's look at the picture of the, this piece. 
The first, let's look at the hand drum dance. The Sinkang people are good at singing and dancing, so their music is full of rhythm. And the Chun Wu use this kind of rhythm. And we can find this is the segmentation rhythm in the left hand. This kind of rhythm runs through the whole piece. And I think this is not only the characteristic of the music, it all, and the, it, but it's also the characteristic of the Sinkang people. Let me play this. So the beautiful melody will come in too. And the next picture is an uh, olive styled melody. We can find the right hand doing the melody. In the right hand, we can find the acceding notes goes, do goes up and the draw notes goes down. It is like a ship of oliver. Because as we know, the oliver, the two ends of the oliver is pointed, but the medium is round and full. So when it's in music, at the beginning, it must be very piano, and uh, then to the crescendo, to the medium, the music in the medium is strong and powerful, and then it goes down to the diminuendo to the end. Let me play this. the music more active and the, the music we can heard it invoke the growth of new life in the spring of the Sinkang people. And uh, the, the other picture is change of semi-quivers. We can find it is very interesting in the left hand. There are just all the same notes and there are all the perfect, perfect, uh, perfect uh, fifth due tones. And uh, it is uh, imitate the clap clock of house dancing, and uh, the right hand doing the melody. Let me play this. the harvest. So in this part, the emotion is delighted and uh, excited. These are the three Chinese pictures of Chun Wu. And now I would like to intru introduce another piece, Pi Wang. This is also a representative piece of Chinese repertoire. And this piece was composed by the famous Chinese contemporary composer Zhang Zhao. And uh, through this piece, the com composer illustrates his childhood and the influence around him. Pi Wang is a popular piece because of its special composition technical and, and, uh, rich, and rich contents. Most importantly, it has the, some elements of Peking opera. And uh, when the Mr. Zhang Zhao uh, said when he did an interview in Chinese television, he said, Touch is the fortune. 
he composed this piece. And uh, when he composed this piece, it is nearly to his, it is near to his 30th birthday. And he wants to use some traditional elements to express himself and as a gift to himself. And uh, as we know, and uh, Peking Opera is the treasure of Chinese culture. It completely inherits the Chinese culture. But the piano is a Western instrument. It is tended with the elements of Peking Opera when the Chinese composer combine them together. And the Pihuang is an outstanding piece of this. Uh, when I do the researching, I find there are two applications of Peking Opera used in Pihuang. And the first is the piano sound imitates the sound Peking Opera. And uh, the second is the adopt of Peking Opera in piano. Let's look at the first. The piano sound imitates the sound in Peking Opera. First, let's look at the first part of this piece. In this part, in Daoban part, the sound is imitate the sound of Jinghu. It is a Chinese instrument like Arhu I showed at the beginning. Let me play this. doing the trio because it is doing the trio and uh, it is also like the violin doing the trio in the western music and from the first bar it is doing the melody and it is imitate the string tassel and uh, the next part we can find it is use the jinghu uh, imitate the jinghu to tell you a story it's just like telling story and uh, take us to uh, memory. And uh, the next is imitates the trumpet in Peking Opera. This part is also very interesting. We can find the, the left hand, the notes in left hand are all the same. And uh, the music comes from far away because at first it is piano and it do the gradually strong. And uh, the same notes and the same rhythm in the left hand makes the music more glowy. And uh, the right hand, right hand doing the melody. As when I introduced this piece, I said, the composer illustrates his childhood and the influence around him. So this piece is describing the composer when he was a child playing in the garden. Let me play this. And the next is the imo uh, imitate the flowing water. And this, the name of this part is called Liu Shui. 
in Liu in Chinese words, Liu Shui means flowing water. And we can find from the score. At first, it's the mezzo piano, and then to the piano. And until to the fourth bar of the second line, it starts to do the crescendo. And it is just like at first, this is the water is just a small brook, and it generally gets generally strong, strong, and it becomes a great river. And uh, like a great river. Let me play this part. <laughs> And uh, the next is the piano imitates the fight on the stage. This 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 called quiet, and this is a uh, allegro part. It is described like two men fight on the stage, and uh, we can find at first it is for forty, and then to, to the mezzo piano suddenly, and then to the crescendo to F, and then to the piano, and then to the crescendo. And this makes the music is far off composition. And uh, it can be found the emotion of this part is excited and it describes the fight and content. Let me play this part. And uh, the another aspect is the adopt of picking opera in piano. Because the piano is quite different with the picking opera. So the composer doesn't follow all the picking opera melody in this piece. But he collects the core notes of the picking opera and uh, puts this core notes to the melody and uh, to the Harmony. And we can find from the score, this is from the Daoban, and this is the earlier part. The four notes G, B, C are in the melody and in the harmony. Let me play this and you can have a direct feeling. Drama and music. 
and they use the modern composition technical to build the sound and make an inherent conduction with the Chinese culture. And uh, the difference is the Chinese composers want to use, express the connection of the national and the traditional culture and some opinions about the culture because we are local people and it might be easier for us to understand the Chinese culture. And, but in the Western piano works, the ten Chinese elements are always the tools the composer used. And uh, what the composer want to expect is the Chinese elements can help them develop their composer concept and uh, steps. And to conclude, after my presentation, I hope you have a better standing about how the Western composer and uh, how the Western composer use the traditional Chinese elements and the application of Chinese elements to the modern Chinese piano works. And because of the collaboration, more people want to listen to the Chinese piano works and the uh, increasing number of Chinese piano works being composed. Thank you for your listening. Thank you.